this is Hino, a small city in western Tokyo that isn't really known for all too much I believe. It's a bedroom town, a place that is mostly residential for people who commute to work into central Tokyo. Not exactly the commercial center of Tokyo or anything, a nice quiet part of the city and in today's video that is where we're going. I'm taking you with me for a chill morning of film photography in Hino, one of Tokyo's suburbs. is actually just a couple stations south from my grandmum's place and so I got to ride the monorail, which I was very excited to do because I find this train so fascinating. The shoot actually already began during this ride when I was standing opposite to a person reading the newspaper and I felt like this could be an interesting first shot. Here it is and I think this is a wonderful start. I love how the composition worked out by chance. I say by chance because I just happened to be standing where I was and this person just happened to be sitting in front of me. I like that the shoulder on the left is in frame so prominently because it provides the context of the situation I was in. It makes the photograph feel like a true perspective of my view. Also, a little detail I appreciate is the tilt of the subject's head so that we get to see one eyelid, but only one. Anyway, after the train ride, I decided to stay on the platform to get this shot of the train station when the next train approaches. Here's the shot, and I think it's not bad. I love how the two people entered the frame to add a sense of life to the quiet station. The fact that it's the two of them feels balanced in a way, creating a triangle of interest with the train in the distance. I'm quite happy with this outcome. Then I got one more shot before I strapped on the GoPro. This is just down the stairs from the platform. As I walked down there, I was immediately intrigued by the design with all the tiles and tile-shaped windows that let in a soft light. I positioned myself in a corner and waited for a subject. I was thinking of a person in a suit or something like that, but then this happened. A mother with two children came into frame. One child was in her arms and the other was walking beside her. At first, I kind of dismissed them as not the right subject, but then the child dropped their bag and dramatically called the mum. I don't know why it was dramatic in the situation, but it made me feel like, oh no, and so I pressed the shutter and got the shot of the moment in which the child picks up the bag. I'm so happy how this unplanned scene unfolded and that I was able to react. Now, the photograph doesn't just show the intriguing architecture, which I initially wanted to capture, but it also tells the little story, which I for some reason felt moved by, and a fraction of that feeling is now captured in this photograph which lets me pass it on to you in the hopes that you can also somehow feel something or connect with the photograph in some other way. Anyway, after that, I finally strapped on the GoPro and began my walk of exploration in Hino. By the way, on this day, I was shooting with the Pentax K1000 again with a roll of Luminar 100, a rather new film stock. I'll talk about it a bit more later. Not far from the station, I found this random section on the streets that felt busier than the rest. I framed up a vertical shot and got this. I think this is pretty nice, so what intrigued me here to the point of photographing the scene are the various things placed in the little space, which contrasted the otherwise rather empty street. The little telephone box, the bike, the red flag, the yellow cones and the green leaves from the plants all fill the scene with some life, implying that someone must have put them there. It's also the small things, like how the flowers are so close to the telephone that I imagine it to be a bit of a nuisance when actually trying to use that phone. Do you relate to what I'm saying? I found this interesting, so I got the shot. So, from this bridge, I got a nice view of this river, and above was the monorail. I thought this could be a cool shot with the monorail in frame, so I waited for it to come. Here's the result, and I think this is a decent try. It's by far not great, but alright. What I like is still the initial idea, which I think worked out splendidly. However, I would love to see this in a different lighting situation. The lighting here is quite boring, but imagine this earlier in the day or in the evening, and then also imagine the sky had a couple clouds floating around. And maybe a couple people would also be nice. So I think you get my point. The shot is fine, but I feel like there is so much room for improvement here. Oh, and by the way, I have no idea what that thing in the corner is. It looks like my finger, but I cannot imagine that I seriously did that kind of move.
Next, I had walked quite some time without getting a shot until I came here. I liked this slightly higher view down into the town with the houses beside me in the foreground, so I set up a shot. Here's the result, and it's okay. One main thing I'm slightly disappointed by is the weather actually. It was supposed to be sunny, which it was, but right at the time when I had started to shoot, a ceiling of clouds moved in on one side, and that side is exactly the one pictured here. Now, clouds aren't really bad, but in this case, I think it makes the shot so grey and takes out the vibrancy of the neighbourhood on a sunny day that I was aiming to capture. The subject, in this case I was trying to have the house on the right to take that place, is wonderful I find. I like the design and the look of the house, but would love to see this in better lighting. But at the time of shooting, I was feeling optimistic, so I got the shot anyway. Whatever, let's move on. As I went around the corner, I decided to get a shot of this scene here with the delivery worker. Here's the result, and I quite like this. I don't mind the weather here because the photograph's focus is on the worker, not the entire scene. I love the colours of the jacket and how the composition works with the subject on the right and the location on the left to add context, but without distracting. One thing, however, which I'm still practicing and which I would have liked here is to gain the courage to be patient and actually photograph people from the front. This was a common comment in my video from Shinjuku a couple weeks ago. I photographed too many backs. I would like to remind you though that I'm absolutely not a street photographer and I'm practicing the skill and also the courage to press the shutter and photograph a stranger when they are facing me and clearly seeing me taking the photo. Especially in this case, it would have been so obvious because there's literally no one else here, just the two of us. So I'm still practicing and I feel like I've been getting better. I'll be showing you the newer results in future videos. These two say entrance. <laughs> no idea what this is. I'm looking for a temple that should be somewhere around here. So maybe that sign was saying just that. So I'd come up to this park because I knew there was supposed to be a neat view of a temple of sorts somewhere here. So far I hadn't found it, but instead I spotted a tree that seemed to position itself in a way that it stood out from the rest, as if it wanted to be photographed. Five, six, a thousand. Here's the shot, and this time I think my optimism paid off. I was quite hesitant to shoot this, but decided to get it and hope for the best, and now I'm pretty happy with the result actually. I like how the tree in the middle sets itself apart and how the composition complements it. The other trees frame it, and the clouds above also seem to make this extra layer and a sort of frame. Lastly, I think this photo is a nice depiction of Hino actually, in the sense that I'm here in this quiet park, yet as can be seen in the background, the vast city of Tokyo is right here. So where's that temple? Found it. <laughs> Let's see if we find a good frame. The shot turned out pretty good looking in my opinion. You know this type of framing is a weak spot of mine. However, it's quite a generic Japan theme shot, I know, but sometimes I have to get these. Then, before continuing, I'd like to briefly talk a bit more about the film stock, Luminar 100. It's a film by a Canadian company called POFO, who sell all sorts of film stocks from 35mm to 120 what I think is especially cool is that they launched their own brand of film a couple months ago. The film is a respooled Kodak Aero color film as can be read on the website, so POFO is adding another choice to the color negative film market and also they're trying to keep the prices relatively low when compared to many Kodak film stocks. 
This is the second time they're sponsoring a video, which I consider to be a dream for me because film is pretty much as close as it gets when looking for brands that are ideal partners for me. And also you can directly see what the film is capable of in the photographs in this video. At this moment, the film is sadly sold out, but Pofo is working on getting them restocked and told me to, in the meanwhile, recommend Electra, which too is an aero color film. Also check out their shipping policies. If you're from the US or Canada, you can even get free shipping when ordering bulk. Anyway, you can check the shop out via the link in the description. I think it's pretty cool and I'm so grateful that they are partnering with me, so thank you. So I had come down the hill and I was exploring the temple and got a couple shots here, however sadly the GoPro failed me again. Luckily I only lost a short portion here and I still have the footage from my shoes after leaving the temple. I'm beginning to think that it might be an issue with the SD card, so I'll see how it goes once I replace it. Anyway, it's only three shots I got here while at the temple, the first one being this wide shot of some workers building something on the grounds of the temple. I was intrigued by the colour contrast of the red building and the blue truck and plastic covers. I like the scene I was able to capture for that reason, and also the guy carrying all those poles on his shoulder. However, the composition feels a bit random, I feel like there isn't really a proper composition to be found here, the photo feels a bit messy in that regard. The next shot I got is of these two in red, and yes, it's people's backs again, but in this case I don't even mind too much, because I got it for the colours. I love the fact that the two people came to the red temples dressed in red themselves, and as you can see, they are just passing through the scene with the truck and the other splashes of blue, resulting in such a vibrant, high colour contrast picture, which I like for that reason. Lastly at the temple, I got this shot, which I enjoy a lot. I love how the composition shows a little bit of everything and barely anything actually. The building to the right is just at the edge but then cut off, same with the building on the left and the truck on the left, same with the van behind the rock in the middle. The only thing that stands clearly without any obstacles or distractions is the person in the centre of the frame. This gives me the feeling of a quiet middle. While everything around the subject is busy, in the middle the scene calms down and lets the subject have some breathing room. I'm so fond of that. leaving the temple, I walked through some streets coming closer to the train station area. Here I found a scene that caught my eye because of all the tiles and the splashes of red. Here's the shot, and this one sadly didn't really work out in my opinion. I found the splashes of red interesting, however I think the placement doesn't harmoniously work here, they just feel cluttered along the middle. Also, the person walking through the frame kind of ended up being more distracting than a good subject, so I guess this was a miss. arrived at the train station, which was surprisingly quiet, and spotted this person in red with a black umbrella to cover the sun, which by the way, in case you don't know, is quite common in Japan. Many like to bring an umbrella on sunny days to use as a personal parasol. Anyway, the shot is alright. I got it for the colour, which I guess I got, but apart from that the shot is quite boring. This is a prime example actually in which I think a front-facing photograph would have probably been much better and much more interesting because the facial expression could have added a lot more to the story. continued through the streets of a quiet neighbourhood and didn't shoot for a little while until I came to this park where some elderly people were enjoying a game. I love to see people being active outside so I wanted to photograph the action. I had to wait for some time for anything to happen and eventually got a shot, but I was afraid that it wasn't going to be a good one, so I waited a little longer. And then the player walked into the middle of the field, effectively coming closer to me, which I of course then wanted to make use of. Here's the first shot, and as I was anticipating, it doesn't really work with everyone so far away. However, here's the second one, and this turned out much better, I find. The photograph has now gained so much depth by separating the layers into the foreground, the ground, the midground, the player in action, and the background, the other players in the shade under the trees. I like how this one turned out. 
Then, while I was waiting for the last shot to unfold, a group of kids led by four adults were passing me, and now they were climbing the stairs. I thought that this group could be a lovely subject for a low angle photograph from here. Here's the shot, and I think it's cool. No idea how I got the composition so tilted, but apart from that, the low angle composition works pretty nicely here. I love how the colours of the children's heads go with the blue of the sky. Then I went up those steps myself to see the river and the interesting concrete build of the river bank. I'm not at all used to seeing this type of concrete riverbank, which in Japan, however, doesn't seem to be too uncommon. I got a shot simply to document this interesting difference. It's the type of shot that, for me, just shows an impression of Japan without being photographically that interesting. <laughs> Ew! Could I have done that, Tom? Probably not. Whatever. After my little adventure across the river, I continued my walk here, exploring more of this residential area. At one point, I came onto a road where I found a white taxi. As I approached it, the taxi driver even came out and opened the back, which would have looked pretty cool as a photograph, but sadly I wasn't quick enough, so I got the shot of just the taxi. Here's the result, and it's not bad, even though the scene might have been more interesting a minute earlier. I like the shot nevertheless for the value of documentation. It's a pretty simple shot of a pretty simple road in a pretty simple town, which is why I might not get that many photographs. So I'm happy to have this sort of neutral shot that just pictures a part of Tokyo's suburbs in the 2020s, which one day will probably look nostalgic. Then that was pretty much the end of the shoot. I continued to walk to the monorail station from where I took the monorail back home. On the way, I did get a couple more shots, which all turned out quite nice, I find. Lastly, to end the video, I want to show you a couple more shots from this roll that I finished in the next few days, so the subjects are a bit scattered. I just want to leave you with a more diverse impression of what this film stock can look like. I'm also really happy with some of these. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed coming along this morning. Before I say goodbye, I'd like to just briefly shout out the lovely community that is supporting me on Patreon. Huge thank you to each one of you. If you're interested in extra videos, Lightroom presets or physical postcards, you can check out what I have to offer by the link in the description. Oh, and I also sell prints by the way, if that is more your thing. Alright then, I hope to see you again soon. Until then, goodbye.